1,500 liters the pellet for the lata. So, how many meters do you think this can reach? I'm sure this is one of the most classic toys in Brazilian folklore. The tin can telephone, the tomato paste can telephone, the pea can telephone, the Monica's gang telephone. If you're under 30, you might not have played with this. I'll teach you how to make the simplest model, okay? They're basically two cans like this one, like a pea can, corn can or whatever, a piece of string and a nail to make a hole. You just need to make a hole right in the middle of the bottom of each can. Then I cut a long piece of string, pass it through the hole and tie a big knot so it doesn't slip out. Using two cans, you can create the simplest communication device in the world. Let's try it out. Stop, stop, stop! When we were recording, we thought the microphone was working well, but it wasn't. It was failing because it was inside the can, making a weird echo. We added subtitles to these parts so you can fully understand what's happening. But don't worry, we fixed this at some point in the video, you'll see it's going to be really cool. I put the microphone inside the can. The sound will be a bit weird when I talk outside, but inside it'll be fine. Wow, I didn't remember anymore. The sound is much better than I imagined, don't you think? This is it without stretching. Now, fully stretched, try it out. It makes a total difference. It has to be stretched. Very good, very good. Let's test it with the big can. Let's start improving this thing here. The first thing I want to test is if, with the same string, same distance, but a bigger can, will the sound come out better? My bet is yes, that the sound should come out better because the bottom of this can is bigger. I'll explain why I think that in a moment. What's the logic? What's the science behind this phone? When we speak, we make the air vibrate, the air shakes, and this shaking of the air, this vibration, reaches the other person's ear, makes the eardrum inside vibrate, which is like a little membrane there, and this is transformed into electrical signals inside the brain. That's how you can hear what the other person is saying. With a tin can phone, it's a little different. When you speak into the can, the vibration of the air doesn't go very far, it stays concentrated inside the can, and then what vibrates is the bottom of the can. The bottom starts to shake, you can actually feel it in your hand. But the string that connects one can to the other also shakes. When this vibration reaches the bottom of the other can, the air inside that can start to vibrate too. And then we can hear as if we were close to the other person. The challenge in this story that we want to overcome today is that as the vibration travels along the string, it loses strength. The signal weakens significantly over distance, making it nearly impossible for a phone like this to work a kilometer away. But we want to test some different materials to see if this vibration holds up a bit, if it preserves a little better along the way. The next candidate is the ribbon. It's a kind of string, but it's made of plastic. It doesn't have those little hairs around it. It has a more compact look. I think this will make the wind, the air around it, have less influence on the transmission of sound. I'm hearing you perfectly. I think the sound is a little less deep than with the string, but I hear it perfectly. The last test I'm going to do is with this wire. It's a stainless steel wire, so it's a bit harder. It's a bit tougher. It's harder to straighten this wire than regular wire. I want to see how we're going to join this thing later. I've never tied a tight knot in wire, but on the manual channel we've even tied knots in a drop of water. It must be hard. Just by the sound it's making, I have no doubt, this is going to work much better. Look, just by shaking the wire, it transmits the sound really well. At first the echo was insane, you couldn't hear anything. You could hear your own voice inside your own can, it was really crazy. I can't really hear you with this one because there's too much echo. We found that putting a finger on it slightly reduced the echo, but it's not ideal as it also decreases the volume somewhat. Did the sound get better? Holding the wire now made it perfect. I think I was able to hear you much better. So we decided to go for it and put a piece of cloth in the middle. 
and it worked really well. The echo disappeared completely, now it's really good. I believe that speaking created a unique vibration in the wire traveling between the cans. The cloth stops this, allowing only sound to pass through. Before testing it outside, I want to check something that's said to work. Spatial sound created with a slinky and two cans. It's a tin can telephone with a slinky in the middle. You don't need another can. It's not a tin can telephone. It's just a can with a springtail. Listen to the noise. You know that shot that happens in space? Doesn't this deserve a like? The small backyard of Manuel de Mundo is no longer sufficient for our testing needs. So we came to Villa Lobos Park, which is nearby and has really open spaces. And the first thing we have to do is measure the ground to see about how far we can stretch the phone. Find out a security flaw in the tin can phone. We're stretching this line to measure it, it's 50 meters, but we notice that people don't see the line. Someone just walked right over it a moment ago. I'm afraid that when we stretch the tin can phone, someone might ride by on a bike and hit their neck or on rollerblades, something like that. We have to change places. This won't work here, there are too many people. At 50 meters, you can't hear the other person talking. You have to shout. We've set a distance of 150. Maybe even shouting, you won't be able to hear. Let's see if the phone reaches. Let's test it with wire. One really cool thing I hadn't thought about is that the speed of sound in steel is much faster than in air. In air, the speed of sound is about 340 meters per second. In steel, it's 6 kilometers per second, which is like 20 times more. So what happens with this distance? Besides the fact that I can't hear Danny because he's really far away. Even if I could hear him, I would hear him with half a second of delay. So, in practice, when he speaks over there, the sound will reach me first through the can, then through the air. I mean, if it actually gets through the can, right? 150 meters is a lot. I'm here. The wire is incredibly heavy, much more than I expected. It can't be stretched or it'll break the bottom of the can. I'm unsure if it'll work. The wire sag is immense at 150 meters, pulling down significantly. Danny is now working on the other end of the can, connecting it from the other side. However, based on how he pulled the wire, I'm not sure if we'll be able to overcome the sag and stretch the wire sufficiently. While Danny attaches the other can, you may have seen two cool things in movies. The first is a Native American lying on the ground, trying to hear when the cavalry arrives. That makes sense because sound travels through the ground but dissipates easily so you can't tell which direction it's coming from. So I don't know, I'm pretty suspicious about that story. But there's something else I've seen too. People put their ear on the train track to know if the train is coming. And that's something very similar to what we're doing now. Since sound travels very well through steel, the train can be really far away. And as long as there are no expansion joints or gaps in the rail, the sound will reach the person listening there. The train can't be too far and you should be able to tell when it's approaching. However, avoid trying this in the subway due to the electrified tracks. There's a challenge here, which is putting the microphone inside the can and you still being able to hear what we're saying. Because when it's in there, there's a lot of echo from the can itself. So the sound ends up kind of dull, kind of weird, and the microphone can't pick it up very well. I'll put it inside and we'll try talking with the mic in the can. Wow, but it's but it's real. This is better than a walkie-talkie. No need to buy one. This is a cell phone. You just take two cans, a piece of wire, and you can talk to someone on the other side without spending a dime, without needing to recharge the battery. It's just pure joy. Very crazy, very crazy. If you've been following Manuel Mundo for a long time, you'll remember the video where Castanhari takes a chopstick with a kind of needle at the tip, puts it on a record, spins it, and the music plays in his head. We recorded with Ash using the same setup, but with a small motor attached to the chopstick tip. That's the concept. I'll put the wire in my mouth and Ivory will speak there. 
Theoretically, I should be able to hear with the wire in my mouth. Can you hear what I'm saying? I'm hearing perfectly. Awesome, awesome. Uh, let's see if you're really listening. Three plus three, do it with your hand. Move your hand as many times as the answer. <laughs> he hears normally. That's so crazy, man. This is really wild. He's hearing by biting the wire. Very good, very good. Let's be honest. It's not every day you see an experiment being pushed to the limit. That's awesome. What did you think? Is the sound better than what we tested manually? No, it's impressive. Look, I'd even say that the sound here was better than what I heard manually. When we did it manually, we could hear the other person through the air. Now we can't, so you only focus on the sound from the can. No, yeah. And then it's very clear. It's impressive, it's impressive. Oh, it's really cool. You don't need to keep the can glued to your ear like that. I can talk and listen at the same time. It's a real phone, guys. Now, here's the thing. Let's test it with the string. Let's see if this works too. Not everyone will buy 150 meters of wire to make it at home. String is easier. I forgot to mention I'd have to rewind all this wire. 150 meters of it. This task seems never ending. I should have just gotten a kite reel here to wind this thing up. Flag string from a June festival, huh? This one's cheap and it's light too. We won't have to kill ourselves to stretch this thing out. I thought it would be lighter, but it really isn't. The key is stretching the string, and cotton string is difficult to stretch. Are you listening, Danny? Man, I can hear you, but it's much quieter than with the wire. I can hear you too, but you really have to pay attention. It's pretty hard to hear. But I think the sound is actually nicer. What do you think? Yeah, I think the sound is nicer. It's a little bit clearer, but it's much quieter. And the string has to be really tight too. I'm using a lot of force here. I think it's way more than five kilos. Yeah, I noticed that too. It's really hard to stretch this string. I think it's because it's elastic. Popcorn joined the gym to get even more popped. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I get it. I just didn't understand what that sentence means. Guys, it's approved with string, but the range isn't the same. The signal is much weaker. It's worth doing at home. It's a lot of fun. And I'm being bit and attacked by ants here. I can't hold this string anymore. Thanks, Danny. 